This is part two of the Kiss Review with me, Ralph Vieira, Dr. Fuck, a Thrasher Die, and Kevin, the fucking myth, Warhaft. Yeah. This CD has cracks and everything, because when I first listened to it, I went like that. Piece of shit. Now this one. <laughs> Ace release, you know, solo CT is uh, very cool. Is it better than the other four, three? It sold more. Is that true? Yes, it did. Yeah, it had the big hit, uh, New York Groove on it, so that's why it sold more. I think, personally, this album kicks ass, and he's always been my favorite member, and it blows away all the other Kiss solo albums, and most Kiss albums, you know? I think this album is kick ass. Snowblind rules. I will not do that to that. <laughs> then we go to. The controversial Dynasty album. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this album? The song uh, called I Was Made For Loving You. Yes, the disco hit. Kiss uh, wanted to venture into different musical styles and they thought that maybe making a disco song was... You're making them sound like the Beatles. Look, disco was popular. They're into money. They just wanted to make a disco hit. That's why not, not, not disco is like so trendy and popular at the time that they just went for the money. And plus they were on Casablanca Records. So this was a total sellout on their part, right? Yes. Am I right? Yes. My opinion, this album is really good. Other than I'm not into that I Was Made For Love You. But I think the rest of the songs rocked, right? Yeah. I mean, a little disco-ish here and there, but with Charisma and uh, Sure Know Something, still good songs, 2000 Man, Magic Touch, Hard Times, Save Your Love, yeah. all great songs. I recommend this album. And I think anybody out there says, oh, I don't like this because if I was made for loving you, skip that song. It's track one. Listen to the rest. I think it rocks. Then we go to... Kiss Unmasked. What's your opinion on Unmasked? Here's the thing about Kiss at that time. They were going through some changes. Pierre decided to leave. Eric Carr was the new member. Bro. This album, just like Dynasty, did not have Peter Chris on it, except for Dirty Living. Who played drums on these two albums was Anton Figg, who later became the drummer on the David Letterman show. Right. And also, he played drums on uh, the Ace Frehley solo album. Uh, I, I didn't like this album. Sorry, I know a lot of people like it. It's just too poppy. It, it was too gay. The Elder. The Elder. What are your thoughts on The Elder? Many people say that that is... Hold on to it. I'm gonna go grab a beer. Alright. Many people say that this is like the worst Kiss album. I don't say that! Well, Ralph don't say that, but... What's Kiss's worst album? Worst album, The Elder. Oh, you're crazy, dude. You always have to give Kiss a chance to put out great music. But this is uh, very different. They, you know, put this out and uh, many people thought why do this? It's not a good album. It has all these flutes and you know, all these other instruments and not, you know, Kiss itself. This album was actually Gene Simmons' idea of a movie. That's why it's called Music for the Elder. But it never got off the ground because this album flopped so hard that uh, they never ever made the movie. Or they never toured behind it. They only did one live performance on a TV show where they only played three songs from this album. Record companies were in shock and they pretty much abandoned it kind of quick and released this like a couple months later, I think. Yeah. But this never came to the US. This was a, a compilation album with four songs trying to show people that they weren't turning into this, uh, I don't know what you want to call uh, the Elder music, but I liked the Elder. I thought it was a weird album, but that's what I liked about it. I, it, was, it was just strange. But when it came out, I admit, I hated it. I, I wasn't even into Kiss no more. Tell you the truth, Kevin, by a mask, I gave up on Kiss. Then they released this. I never even knew about this so much later. It has four songs that are, eh, and they're okay. But when I got back to Kiss, was when I heard my friend come by with a cassette copy of this album. And I was like, oh, fuck Kiss. They suck, man. They're, they're garbage. Then I heard this, and it fucking blew my mind, dude. What are your thoughts? Kiss was back at that time, and um, Eric Carr was the drummer. Now, one of my favorite songs on this is I Love It Loud. A couple of um, other songs, A World Without Heroes and War Machine. No, World Without Heroes is off The Elder, dude. Oh. Man, some Sorry. Kiss fan. What the hell, Kevin? What's wrong with you? I guess I'm in another world. Yeah, you're in another world without heroes. My favorite on here is War Machine, but uh, Creature of the Night kicks ass, Rock and Roll Hell, Danger, Killer. This is a killer record. 
Highly recommend this. Even if you don't like Kiss, listen to War Machine. And you'll like, finally, a Kiss song. Because that song kicks fucking ass. Now we go to this one. Um, I guess, as you can see, Kiss has their makeup off. They made that decision themselves, not their fans. And at that time, uh, Vinnie Vincent was in the band. And, uh, Ace Freely was no longer in Kiss. They wanted to prove that they could still do the music with the makeup and the costumes off. I thought that the, the song Lick It Up on this album sucks so hard. I mean, it sucks. I hate the song Lick It Up, but I love the album. So it's kind of like when I mention Lick It Up to people, they're like, ah, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Forget the song Lick It Up. The rest of the album kicks ass. I think it's almost as good as Creatures of the Night. It's in the same vein. It's a great fucking heavy album. I recommend Lick It Up. Just skip track three. Which is Lick It Up. Then we go to... Animal Lives. What are your thoughts on Animal Lives? Um... Who played guitar on this? Who played guitar on that? Yeah. Mark St. John. What happened to Mark St. John? He, uh, got a infection in, in, like, one of his hands, and he couldn't play guitar anymore. So he had to, like, leave the band, and they got uh, Bruce Kulick to fill in, you know, it was on the Animal Lives Live uh, concert video. Are you aware that Bruce Kulick played on this album? Did you know yeah. that? Yes. You know what song he played on? Ha! Ah, you don't do it. You don't. Not you don't really. know. Neither do I, but I know he played on this album. I know a couple songs he played on it. Or maybe it was just one. I just try my best in this. <laughs> Alright, Ke Kevin, you're really disappointing me as a KISS fan, to tell you the truth. Then shoot me. No, I won't shoot you. We, got, we still got more <laughs> CDs to go. I don't have a gun anyway. Alright, so then we go to Kiss Asylum. Yes, that is signed by Bruce Kulick right there. What's your thoughts on Kiss Asylum? Well, it's way different than Animal Lies, but uh, it's the first album that Bruce Kulick did. On their stage shows, they were looking a little different. A little? They were wearing more makeup in this era than they did in the 70s. All glammy with the... F oh, th to me, this album's okay. It's not that bad. It's not as horrible as, let's say, uh, a couple that's coming up. Like, the next two really suck. And this one is kind of, like, better than those two, but it's still not that great. And they were wearing glittery shit, and Gene Simmons looked like mod and shit. It was kind of a disgusting era for Kiss, in my opinion. I know a lot of people love this era of Kiss. I thought it was a little um, too flamboyant. Then we go to this. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that album is Crazy Crazy Nights. No, it's just called Crazy Nights. You know, it has some songs on there like, um, you know, the, the song... Um, Look, they're right there. Which one? No, 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 I fight hell. Uh, Reason to Live. Okay, yeah. Which but, was a video. They had a video for that. Yeah. Like ballady, 80s schlop power ballad crap. You like that? You like Reason to Live? Mm. He does. He actually does. He just can't admit it. Say it, Kevin. Come on, you're Kevin Warhaft. Okay. I what do you like? I like um, most Kiss songs, you know. Do you like, but do you like uh, Reason to Live? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, how this one? Smashes, starts, shiz, and hits. Uh, the second greatest hits type of Kiss album, right? Yeah. All right, what do you think of this? It has a few new songs on there. Uh, Let's put the X in sex. What, what do you think of that song? <laughs> I thought it was a blatant ripoff to beat Bon Jovi, and it sucks. Then it has the other song, You Make Me Rock Hard. Oh, the, the, the double entendre of that song, huh? You Make Me Rock Hard, you get it? Yeah. Like, not rock hard, but rock hard. Yeah. Such a homo, that Paul Salem. All right, now we go to... What do you think of this one? Eric Carr was... Um you know, still in the band. This is Eric Carr's last album with Kiss. Yeah. Right. Okay, what are your thoughts on this album? It's alright, you know. Uh, the songs could have been better, but it's, it's alright. I mean, it has the song Forever on there. Alright, uh, well, my opinion, since Peter Chris's solo album is technically not a Kiss album, I would have to say that this is, Peter Chris is the only album in the Kiss catalog that's worse than this piece of shit. I hate that album. 